Oh, Jared. <clears throat> uh, what do you think, Jared? A bit too uh, frivolous for the wife of a judge? Well, I say that depends on the judge, or uh, even more on his wife. <laughs> I think Irene would love it. Good, good. <clears throat> um, speaking of Christmas presents, what do you say we collaborate on one for Maybell Williams? I hope you're not asking me to set bail. Well, she's only a kid, you know. My answer is no. Well, why not? There's no proof as yet that she was actually Billy Joe's accomplice. You're right. But it would be the height of folly to let her out of that cell for even one minute. She's a wildcat, Jared, right out of the brush. And I trust her just about as much. And besides, with Billy Joe Gaines on the loose, it's asking for trouble. All right. All right, suppose you release her in my custody. What? I'll guarantee that she won't run away and that she won't jeopardize public safety. You can't make that guarantee. Possession of stolen goods is a bailable offense, Your Honor, and that's all she's been charged with. She's not worth it, Jared. Well, now, suppose we just wait and see about that. All right. I'll release her in your custody. But how much you want to bet you'll regret it? I'll bet you a box of your favorite cigars. It's a bet, Counselor. Suppose you're waiting for me to thank you. Not necessarily. I'm just doing my job. Taking me home to spend Christmas with your family? Or is that just what you told the judge? Maybe you got some other plans for us, Counselor. Like, maybe you got some plans that you and your client might get together real cozy-like and discuss the case. You know, I was going to buy some clothes for you. I imagine you're just about the same size as my little sister, Audra. Now, you look, Counselor. I never asked you to get me out of jail or to buy me anything, and I especially never asked you to be my lawyer. Well, that little pleasure was arranged for me by the Women's League. Then you were forced to defend me. Now, look, whether you like it or not, the law says you've got to have a lawyer. They asked me, and I accepted. It's that simple. Those old biddies at the League probably asked you to take me home with you, too. This wasn't your idea, was it? Maybell, it's Christmas. Now, no matter how the arrangements were made, you're going to spend the holiday with my family. What do you say we make it a pleasant one? We can't, Counselor. Because nothing's good for me, nothing. Unless I'm with my Billy Joe. Listen to me. You try that just one more time. Maybe there won't be a next time, Counselor. Uh-huh. Let's go. Home or back to prison. You've got a real itch for jail, haven't you? Well, you keep this up and you'll spend a long, long time there. Now, maybe I can help you and maybe I can't. But if you escape, the Supreme Court won't be able to keep you out of San Quentin, understand? Now, let's go. 
All right, Counselor, but you may not have the pleasure of my company for very long. Billy Joe's on the loose, and he's coming for me, law on his trail or not. And when I'm with Billy Joe, nobody's gonna catch me! Oh, it's beautiful. It is kind, isn't it? Just beautiful. Went all the way to Bridge Peak for that spruce. Fought snow and blizzard. And wolves. And frozen feet. Oh, you boys are magnificent. It's kind of scrawny, isn't it? Scrawny! Uh, family, this is Maybelle Williams. Maybelle, this is my mother, my sister Audra. Nice meeting you, Miss Williams. And those two questionable gentlemen over there struggling with that piece of lumber are my brothers, Heath and Nick. Hello. Maybelle Williams. That's right. The Maybelle Williams. Uh, as Maybelle's attorney, I was able to uh, arrange for her to spend the Christmas holidays with us. Of course. I'm so glad that Jared could arrange that you wouldn't have to spend Christmas in... that you could visit with us. I'll bet you are. What's your boyfriend, Billy Joe Gaines, doing for this Christmas, Miss Maybell? Nick. It's all right. Billy Joe has things to do and places to go, Mr. Barkley. Oh, I'm sure he has. Like what bank is he robbing this week? I think that'll be enough, Nick. Perhaps you'd like to wash up. Maybe I'd better. It was a dusty ride out here. I'll show you to your room. Jared, you should have given us some warning. Or at least check with us to see what we'd say about you bringing home Billy Joe Gaines's girlfriend as a house guest. Or maybe I should freshen your memory on Billy Joe Gaines. Nick, lower your voice. This will be your room while you're here. I'm sure you'll find everything that you want. There's water in the pitcher for you to wash with. Now, ain't that fancy? A washing up place right in the bedroom. He wouldn't agree unless I told him she'd be in my custody. In other words, the judge doesn't trust her any more than I do. Jared, I want her out of here. Nick, I can hear you without yelling. When you're ready, I'll, I'll show you around if you'd like. Yes, sirree. It gives you a real warm feeling right in the pit of your stomach. How about you? You as glad to have me around as the rest of your family? I can't answer that yet. And I thought it'd be love at first sight. All the way around. You're saying as she admits to being Billy Joe Gaines' girlfriend, a vicious, outright killer. Nick, we're not concerned at the moment with Billy Joe. Well, I am. And I have been concerned about Billy Joe for an awful long time. Nick, we know. We all feel the same. Keith, but... let me tell you about Billy Joe Gaines. This happened before you got here about a year ago, just Christmas last year. Billy Joe Gaines and his boys decided they would hold up the Stockton Bank. The teller, Dave Ross, a very good friend of mine, was just a little bit too slow about shoving the money into the satchel. Well, Billy Joe thought he was stalling. So he pumped two bullets into Dave Ross's stomach. And as Dave Ross lay there on the floor, bleeding to death, Billy Joe Gaines and his gang helped themselves to $10,000. It was Billy Joe's Christmas gift to Stockton that year. Jared, it's not easy to admit to mistakes. I know that. It's not easy for me. Why don't you take her back? Jared, maybe he's right. Heath, what do you think? I'm not sure. Gaines didn't gun down a friend of mine. But if he had, I might feel different. I vote for whatever Nick wants. Jared, what'd you bring her here for? <laughs> well, I... Uh... I suppose I could tell you I did it because I thought I could do my job better if she were here. 
And? And it was Christmas. Yes, I suppose that's partly the reason. You know, it was a funny thing. I went to visit her in her jail cell this morning to discuss her case, find some basis to defend her. And all the time I was talking to her, she just kind of stared at me, defiantly. And it made me angry, because I felt guilty. Guilty that it was Christmas, that I was coming home to my family and leaving her there all alone in that cold cell. And the guiltier I felt, the angrier I got. So I left. And I told myself, after all, it wasn't any of my business. I didn't put her in there. I was merely trying to help her. And I told myself that all the way over to Judge Parker's office, where I promptly asked him to release her into my custody. Now, Nick, if you really want me to take her back to that cell, I'll do it. But somehow, I don't think you do. All right, Jared. All right. And I hope we all have a Merry Christmas. Welcome. Does that include everybody? It sure includes us. Why, there isn't a bounty hunter or lawman in this state that wouldn't more than welcome us. Yeah, well, the way I figure it, we're about 100 miles from Stockton. We travel about 35 miles a day. We'll make it by Christmas. The only thing is, that pace isn't going to give you time to get her a present. You're wrong, friend. Me. I'm going to be your Christmas present this year. should fit you. Thanks. Good night, Mabel. Good night. Uh, Audra. Audra. Fancy name. Fancy bedroom. I was kind of hungry, so I just thought I'd fetch me something to eat. Well, you're a little off course. Kitchen's over there. Oh. Well, thank you. Well, I can find it myself now. You can go back to whatever you were doing. Well, I'm kind of hungry myself. Let's see what's in the icebox. First, we'll put a little light on the subject. There we are. And then we'll see what we've got. Ah, beef, nice cold milk, freshly churned butter. 
Uh, there's some napkins and silverware and stuff like that in the cupboard over there. I'll get the bread. I think. Ah, there we are. Would your mom mind if we use these plates? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, I was just kind of planning on grabbing a chunk of bread. This is kind of like a party. Well, I'm glad you think so. All right, Counselor. You got something on your mind? You're absolutely right. I want to discuss your case with you. What about my case? I told you everything there was. Well, let's see. You said that you didn't know the stuff that Billy Joe left in your room was stolen. Is that right? That's right. Five thousand dollars in large bills and a sack of gold dust? Look, whose side are you on? I'm just asking questions a district attorney is bound to ask. And we better have some pretty good answers. I told you what happened. I woke up one morning and I found that stuff in my room. And you haven't the faintest idea how it got there, is that right? Sure is mighty good beef, but don't anyone around here believe in seasoning? How about you, counselor? Spice it up a little? Or you got enough spice in your life? You can trust me, Maybell. As a matter of fact, you have to trust me. You're not getting paid for defending me, are you? No. Well, then how do I know that you won't just go run into the judge, tell him that I admit I'm guilty and save everyone the trouble of a trial? I might just do that. If I decide that your best chance is to be thrown on the mercy of the court... The mercy of the court? You're still a minor, you know. Am I, Mr. Barclay? Legally, yes. Now, you look here. I don't want mercy. Not from the court, not from you, not from anybody. Thanks for the sandwich. Good night, Maybell. 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 That room where you were arrested, was that your room or Billy Joe's? It was our room. Well, he paid for it, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. So if he paid for it, legally it would be his room. And whatever he brought into it would be his too. Stolen property in your possession? Not by a long... Your sister forgot to leave me any slippers, so I just... I always dress for a midnight snack, Mr. Barkley. Good night, Maybell. Wait! I won't do it again. I don't expect you to believe that, but honestly, I won't do it again. I said good night. Good morning. Sleep well? Just fine. Well, see you at breakfast. Maybe we'll go riding later. I won't be here later. Morning, Mabel. Do I have time for a cup of coffee? That depends on you. Now, it's just a lousy cup of coffee. You gonna make a big deal out of that? I'm not talking about a cup of coffee. I'm talking about whether you go back to jail or not. 
a lawyer, I'm packed and ready. Last night you promised you wouldn't try it again. Did you mean that? Either you believe me or you don't. I'm not about to start begging you. You have Silas fix you some of the best scrambled eggs west of the Mississippi. Some more coffee? No, thanks, Silas. See you at dinner. All right, sir. Man says you make the best scrambled eggs west of the Mississippi. Is that what the man says? Can I trust him? If you can't trust him, then you can't trust nobody. Say, Billy Joe, I've been meaning to ask, what makes this Maybell so special? You really want to know? Yeah. Well, for one thing, she doesn't ask a lot of stupid questions. <laughs> you tell them, Billy. Hard and play hard. Lots of girlfriends and stuff like that, huh? Is, uh... Is Jared engaged to be married or anything like that? No, not that I know of. But then Jared's kind of mysterious about his women friends. I remember last summer he brought home a girl. I thought for sure she'd be the one. Oh, she was bright and beautiful. But why don't we find something else to talk about? Getting a little tired of your brother and his girlfriends. What's he trying to do? Well, that horse is wild. That's why we keep him out here by himself. He's trying to saddle break him. It's only one way to saddle break a horse, you ride it. Hey, cowboy! You afraid to mount that animal? Were you quitting so soon, cowboy? Billy Joe break three of those in half a morning just for the fun of it. Well, he does things his way, and I do things mine. And both of you stay away from that pony, unless you think a broken back's funny. If you want, I'll show you the rest of the ranch. What are you doing? Come on, fella. Easy now. Maybell, don't be foolish. Thank <laughs> you. 
now, is he? Nothing to worry about. Some bad bruises, but no concussion. Your mother's staying with her until she falls asleep. You can see her in the morning. Oh, fine. Thank you very much for coming by, Doc. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you, Nick. Speaking of Christmas, why don't you drop by a little later for a little Christmas cheer, huh? Thank you. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know what we're having for dinner? I'm hungry as a bear. Before we start discussing dinner, Maybelle, I think you better do a little talking. Well? Well? What happened? Well, you're not going to believe me anyway, so why don't you just go ask your sister? Heath warned both of you girls not to get near that horse. Audrey should have listened. I don't have to. Silas just told me. How's Audra? Audra, she'll be fine. You were with her when it happened. Your brother and I were just discussing that, Counselor. Seems he thinks it was all my fault. Was it? Well, now, it depends on how you look at it. The way he sees it, you get a strong rope and you find the nearest tree. Was it your fault, Mabel? Yes or no? Then again, you might just say that he's a hostile witness. Right, Counselor? You get your things together. I'm one step ahead of you, Counselor. I never unpacked. What actually happened, Nick? All I know is you could talk to her from now till next Christmas and never get a straight answer. Does anyone know what she actually did? What difference does it make? All we have to know is Audra was stopped by that horse and that girl couldn't care less. You may be right. Let's go. Mr. Barclay. Maybell, let's go. Take a drink of water. Go ahead. Some? It's good. Real cold. I was going to argue that you should be given a second chance because way underneath, you're really a decent little lady that you've never intentionally hurt anybody. <laughs> Ain't that nice. You're real tough, aren't you? Just too tough to admit that you might do something nice. Tell me something. Why didn't you run away when you knew you were in trouble? Maybe because I didn't think of it. Too bad you weren't around to advise me, counselor. Or was it because you just couldn't leave Audra lying there that you were more concerned about her than you were about yourself? Are you going to take me back to jail or are we going to just stand here talking? You know something, little lady? You're right. It doesn't do any good to talk to you. What you really need is to be turned over my knee and your backside tanned until you can't... You try it, mister. Don't tempt me. You touch me. Just you touch me. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna fix you for this if it's the last thing I do. When Billy Joe hears about this, you just wait. And I'm gonna tell you something else. I don't want you to be my lawyer anymore. I'd rather rot in jail. I just as soon hang you. Well, I guess I can't take you to Stockton in that condition. Why not? Well, you. You might catch pneumonia. And die? Well, that just might save us all a lot of trouble. And cheat me out of winning this case? 
Don't you dare. Now you go on and get in the house and change your clothes for dinner. We're having some more of that smoked ham. Hey, Billy. What happens we get finished riding all this way and, and bust her out of jail and then find out she's changed her mind? Maybe got herself another bow. Well, that's a right smart question. Right smart. Now, ain't no need to get riled, Billy. Hayes and me is just having some fun. That's all. I'm Maybell's man. That's the way it's been, and that's the way it's gonna be. Well, sure, Billy. Why, why she took up with some other guy, or she changed her mind back to you real quick. Yeah. Or I might just kill that new bow of hers and change her mind for her. Jared, do you think this is the right place for the mistletoe? Well, why not? You hang it there every year. <laughs> well, ladies, I think that looks just fine. That's pretty. Maybe I'll you finish it. I have a million other things to do. Do you really like it? I'm not too good at this. I never messed with Christmas trees before. Well, I think it could use something hanging right there. I is this okay? Oh, here, be careful. <laughs> One thing I can say for myself, I... I sure can be clumsy. Thank you kindly. Oh, that's fine, Silas. Thank you. I'll get it. Oh, Merry Christmas, Merry Barbara. Christmas. Come in. Oh, Come Merry in. Come in. Oh, Have I lost a day somewhere? No. We're riding up tomorrow to visit Bob and Cynthia and the grandchildren. So we brought the presents by today. Oh, well, come into the study. Yours are in there. Oh. Jared? Meg. Well, well, well. Merry Christmas. Guess what I got for you. Oh, no, you don't. I never step into the same trap twice. What trap? Well, it seems to me I fell for that last year. Once you tell me what you got me, then I have to tell you what I got you, right? Now, Jared, I never could wait for surprises. <laughs> well, I'm afraid you'll just have to wait until Christmas, because that's the rule of the game. Come on over here. I want you to meet our house guest. Meg Travis, this is Maybell Williams. How do you do? How do you do? Well, that certainly is a beautiful Christmas tree. Thanks to Maybell. Meg, without any further ado, we better be on our way. We still have a lot of visiting to do. Jared. Ah, yes. With pleasure. said when they told me the price. <laughs> wow. 
Well, bless you, Brother Nick. Now you can just keep the one you borrowed from me. Bless you, Brother Jared, for this nice saddle. Now you can just return the saddle you borrowed from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jared. You're welcome, Heath. They just don't shoot it off in the house. Thank you, all of you. I'm going to be the best man and woman in prison. Oh, Jared, it's lovely. That's the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. Unhand that young lady. Now, isn't that just like a woman getting all set to borrow it? before Maybell has even had a chance to try it on. For me? But what would I be needing a dress like this for? I mean, what a dumb idea. You know, you know for a lawyer, you're not very smart. I better find myself another lawyer. Or I'm gonna end up spending the rest of my life in jail. Find out. A lawyer, name of Barkley, got her out on bail. Got her out of his ranch right now. Just a few miles out of town. Well, now, <laughs> that's right nice of him. Says there's the trouble of breaking her out of jail. Oh. <laughs> Boy, howdy, don't they look pretty? Mm -hmm. Is that a question? It's a fact. <laughs> Wish all your friends a very merry Christmas for me. All right, come on, let's go. And have a good time. Bye, Mother. Where's Mabel? Here I am. Do I look all right? I think you look lovely. So do I, and so will everybody else. Thank you. Well, aren't you coming with us? No, I'll entrust you and Mother with my season's greetings for everybody. I have some work to do. I'll be out in a minute, Mabel. Jared, I think she's falling in love with you. Well, maybe. You know, you help them out or you try their case for them, and suddenly your father, minister, and lover all rolled into one. I've run into it before, and with women more mature than Maybell. But in this particular case, it doesn't worry you. In this particular case, the only thing that worries me is that if I get her free, will it be a worthwhile freedom, or will it be a license for her to run back to Billy Joe Gaines? for me. Yes? Looking for Maybell Williams? Miss Maybell? Yeah, she's my sister. Get her. I'm sorry, she's out visiting with the rest of the family. Where out visiting? If you care to wait, I'll call Mr. Barkley. Silas, who is it? Name's Billy Joe Gaines. Billy, 
I'd always heard you were a pretty smart kid. But coming here was a pretty dumb thing to do. Just shut up and tell me where she is. Gladly. As a matter of fact, I'll do better than that. I'll draw you a map. Now, let's see, Silas. There must be what? About three ranches within a radius of 50 miles where she might be? That's right, Mr. Barkley. And then again, there are at least a dozen homes right outside of Stockton. She might be in any one of those. All right, Mr. Lawyer, sir. When does she get back? Whenever they get through visiting, I imagine. Unless, of course, it gets too late and they decide to stay the night. All right. Why don't we just take it easy and wait till she gets back? How many lawmen do you figure are out looking for you, Billy? On Christmas Day? Probably all shoving turkey into their fat faces. Possibly. But then again, wouldn't you be a lot safer heading up country? Or maybe south to the border? I didn't get where I am playing it safe, mister. <laughs> and where are you, Billy? A $5,000 reward on your head and two steps ahead of a posse and a rope. Well, that's one step more than I need, Counselor. How is Maybell? She talk much about me? She's mentioned you? Yeah, that she did. I've done a lot of thinking about her, too. You know, Billy, if you really thought anything about her, you'd clear out of here right now without her. And let her go to jail? Let her stand trial. She has a chance that way. She doesn't with you. She's been waiting for me. Maybe she was waiting for you, but not anymore. All she's waiting for now is a chance to stand trial and be cleared. You seem pretty sure of yourself, Counselor. Pretty sure of my girl. You think I'm wrong, huh? Well, why don't we let the lady make a choice? Well, you better pray I don't do that, Counselor. Because if you mixed her up so bad she decided to stay, I'll kill you. Corey Hayes. Well, look at our Miss Maybell. Billy Joe's waiting on you in the house. Better not take any chances, please, Mrs. Barkley. That's real good advice. Go get Billy Joe. <laughs> Hope you don't mind waiting a spell, ma'am. She's waiting, Billy. Goodbye, lawyer. You try to stop us or follow us, I'll kill you. Silas, get my gun. my promises. Hey, that's a fancy dress you got on there. It's all right. Well, it's a good thing they treat my girl kindly. Come on, let's ride. She 
Louise with Billy Joe and two others. They went toward the North Ridge. Hold it right there. Keep those hands nice and clear. Lawyer, I told you not to come after us. Well, now, I didn't find that particularly good advice. Drop those gun belts. No. Now, I'm going to ask you just one time. Drop those belts and turn around. You start shooting, and you're not going to hit all three of us. You ain't that good. That may be. But the first one will be right between your eyes, Billy boy. Like I said, you ain't that good, lawyer. Maybe I'll you ride out of there. Go on, Billy Joe, run! Maybe I'll get out of there! was for Billy Joe to come get me. Not you, your family, or any of your fancy Christmas stuff could make me want different. Like you said, lawyer, let the lady make her choice. cigars, sir. I hate to say I told you so. Go ahead, Judge. Say it. Say it all you want. Lord knows I've said it to myself enough. Jared, I've been a lawman for better than 40 years. Sheriff, marshal, prosecuting attorney, now judge. I've seen a thousand Billy Joes, a hundred Maybells. And when I was younger, I, I tried to give them all a chance. Spoon feed them on the milk of human kindness. Turn them into respectable citizens. But I learned my lesson, just like you've learned yours. So the next time you find just find yourself wanting to. Mabel! What happened? Well, I I knew that even Billy Joe had to go to sleep sometime, so I just waited for my chance, and here I am. All right, what do I do now? Just tell the sheriff I've come back? No, you come with me. There's a man who thinks he's met you a hundred times. I'd just like to see the expression on his face when he meets you for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> 